So, very few people in this world uh, have had the chance to face death and live a second life. I am one of those, so, and I tell you why. I remember vividly this day. It was uh, July 21st, 2002. And I was taken like out of a grave from my Jordanian cell. Jor Jor Jordan was my first black site. And I spent eight months and I cannot describe to you like how much pain and suffering I experienced. Most of the pain was emanating from two facts. The fact that my own people, you know, were used to visit harm and pain upon me. The second thing, like hearing the other people being tortured because those were sessions where I was forced, taken out to listen to people being tortured. That was much worse than when they beat me. They did not beat me a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember only two times when they assaulted me physically. And they came to my cell. They said, you're going home after eight months. I started crying because I didn't know what freedom meant. I hated my face. I didn't want to see my face. And I was not allowed to see my face. I don't know why, but in black side, you are not allowed to see your face in a mirror. And this was good because I didn't want to see my face. And so they took me out and they gave me back my portemonnaie. I remember what I had. I think I had about $80 and I had uh, a German Führerschein driver license. I had Canadian driver license and they had my passport outside the port money. And I had some change, Mauritanian change. They gave me that and they said you should sign that you got your things back. <laughs> and I was like thinking, okay, and if you don't give them to me, you think I'm going not to sign. And, but I said that's, that in my head, I didn't tell them anything because I was very scared. I was shaking like this, signing. And I saw the date. The date was 21st of July. But in my head, the date was 31st of July. I don't know how I lost 10 days. I lost the count because I didn't know a lot of the time when it was night or day. And I really don't know why I lost it because I kept like counting every single day. So they put me in that truck blindfolded, earmuffed, and they took me to the airport. I remember they put the uh, music. I remember the artist, Abdul Halim Hafer, my favorite, one of my favorite from Egypt. And then I was enjoying the music because they put it to dump down the noises so that I couldn't hear their calls, you know, and operation. But it was okay. I'd rather hear Abdel Halim Havel than hear uh, some spook. So, and I stayed there. I wanted so bad to the bathroom, so bad. And, but I kept it. And I would keep it for seven more hours. It was so painful. And then people started to touch me everywhere. Then they cut my clothes and they stripped me naked. They put diaper, baby's diaper around. And then 
one of them like removed the 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 blindfold to see my eyes. He was kind of some kind of doctors, and I saw his art it was blonde, blonde hair. I had my suspicion, but now it was confirmed. I wasn't going home. This was a ruse. I was being again kidnapped to another place. And it occurred to me that I'm going to be taken to an American prison and I will die, sentenced to death, or just put there until I die. And I knew from the documentaries I saw during my time in Europe, in Germany, I wasn't far from uh, uh, the Netherlands. Fellow was only 40 kilometers away from me. And I remember like those horrible like treatment of prisoners. Those are American prisoners now. And I was really in a bad position. I did not speak English, numero uno. And two, I was Arab. They perceived me as Arab, whatever that means. That bad. I was African, bad, very bad. I was Muslim, very bad. So I had no chance. And then I knew that was the end of life. And I started to regret stuff. I tell you what I did not regret. I did not regret not having money. I did not regret not having Swiss account. I did not regret not having those beautiful girls that were not interested in me. I did not regret them. And I regretted one thing. I wished I was nicer, you know? And I regretted every bad comment I made to people, to my mother, to my brothers, to my sisters, to my friend, to my ex. And I took it upon myself to be, and I made a vow of kindness. I want to be kind, no matter what. And that's my brother, why it's so easy for me to free myself and forgive people, because I can only be kind, because that's the only thing that matters to me in my life. Very long answer. I mean, a long answer, but not, I mean, not at all long. I mean, uh, 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 a very difficult answer because um, I think if I, and I tried for, uh, uh, we've been in contact for over, for more than half a year, and I tried to, I read your book and I tried to um, imagine, you know, um, um, I would be so full of anger. I would be so full of anger. I'm already angered by the fact that my government can't, you know, get their act together to uh, acknowledge the fact that you have the right to, you know, travel the world, you know. So I would be, I would be <coughs> smothered in rage because you're describing eight months in a prison in Jordania, but that was just, you know, there were 13 more years <laughs> to come after that. I mean... <laughs> Um, uh, 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 it's difficult for me to, it's, to understand. I mean, if I look at my own um, psychological makeup. I absolutely understand your point of view, but I could challenge this question and put it in a different way. Mm -hmm. What matters to you? Does it matter to you to see Richard Zuli and Mr. X suffer in their life? Or does it matter to you to live in peace in your heart? I do remember vividly the day that I was kidnapped in, from my house. I was only with my mother. In, in Mauritania, yeah. Mauritania. Yeah. And this is not the Netherlands where the uh, <laughs> Police come to you and said, we arrest you. There is an arrest warrant. No. This is the, the, the leader of the free world, the United States of America, the most powerful country in the world on recorded history, calling my president, say, arrest Mohamedou 
and ship him to Jordan. They come to me, no arrest warrant. I remember my mother praying frantically with her prayer beads, and I watched her from the rear view mirror until she disappeared. I never saw her again. I, in, in the honor of my mother, I cannot describe to the pain when they came to me, they said, your mother passed away. It was so much burning in my heart. I had to stand up and recite the Quran for about 10 hours because I want to, I want to punish my body so I could rest, I could like make up for the fire, burning fire. And in honor of her memory, I have to forgive those people who hurt me and hurt her because, because this is really peace. Because I, when I forgive, I go back and laugh and love, you know, and I do nothing because I have a vow of doing nothing too, because I want to do nothing. We are now in Netherlands and we have the freedom to do freaking nothing. I just lie down and smile and happy.